This video is going to be about factors controlling primary productivity. So there's a lot of different productivity terms that you might encounter when you're looking at uh, productivity. So the first one is going to be primary production. And so that is going to be the amount of light energy that is then converted to chemical energy by autotrophs in an ecosystem during any given time period. So that'll be the amount of energy coming from the sun that autotrophs, which will be things like phytoplankton and plants, are able to take up and then convert into chemical energy. So then gross primary production is going to be the total primary production of an ecosystem. So if we take the primary production of an entire ecosystem and total up all of those values, that's going to give us our gross primary production. Net primary production, on the other hand, is going to be the gross primary production of an ecosystem minus the energy that those organisms are going to use in respiration. So once again, you take the gross primary product, uh, production and subtract the energy that is used during respiration, and that will give you your net primary production. And so then our net ecosystem production is going to be the gross primary production of an ecosystem minus the energy that's used by all autotrophs and heterotrophs for, for respiration. So with net primary production, we're only subtracting the energy used by the producers for respiration, whereas in net ecosystem production, we're subtracting the amount of energy that's used by the autotrophs and the heterotrophs for respiration. So now looking at some things that can influence the productivity of an ecosystem. Light limitation. So if you have a cloudy day, for instance, on that day you're going to have less photosynthesis than you would on a sunny day because you have less light energy available to those producers to then take up and convert to chemical energy. Um, we can also have limiting nutrients. So those will be elements that have to be added in order for production to increase. Um, so that's going to be things like nitrogen and phosphorus for plants. Typically, those are really important elements for uh, those organisms to uh, be able to increase their production. Uh, the amount of precipitation is going to influence productivity. Climate change can influence productivity. So an example of climate change would be uh, warming in the Arctic is going to increase the metabolic activity of the microbes which is then going to increase the carbon dioxide release, which they're releasing during respiration. And then that eventually is going to lead from a switch uh, to a switch from a carbon sink to a carbon source. So a carbon sink is going to be something that holds a lot of carbon, whereas a carbon source is going to be something that releases a lot of carbon. So when we have more organisms releasing carbon dioxide through respiration, that will eventually lead to a switch from carbon sink to a carbon source, which will influence the productivity of that ecosystem. And then uh, going back to precipitation, if we look at this graph, we can see that the mean annual precipitation has a pretty strong influence on the net annual primary production of certain ecosystems. So with our net annual primary production, or again, that means that we are looking at the uh, gross primary production of the producers in that ecosystem and subtracting the energy used by those same producers for respiration to get our net annual primary production and that's what they have plotted here on this graph. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.